Hey, how you doing? I'm Elton, and this is part two of Modernising .NET Apps for Developers, a series showing you how to take existing .NET Framework apps, run them in containers, and use the Docker platform to modernise the application architecture. In part one, I showed you how to get a .NET 3.5 Web Forms app running in a Docker container on Windows with no code changes. In this video, I'm going to dive deeper. I'll optimise the Docker file and show you how to integrate the application with the Docker platform. I'll also use Docker to run my SQL Server database in a container and use Docker Compose to coordinate the two containers. Let's get started. So far, I've written a simple Docker file to package my app. I'm going to show you how to optimise it so the image build is more efficient and I'll show you how to integrate logging and configuration from the .NET app into the Docker world, still without changing code. I'll also package the application database in Docker and show you how to run SQL Server in a container so the database schema and reference data is there as soon as you start the container. Apps which run across multiple containers are easy to manage with Docker Compose and I'll show you how to use Docker Compose to define, build and run the solution. One of the great advantages of Docker is the consistency you get between environments. You package your app in version Docker images and you use the exact same binaries on a developer laptop and a production cluster. I'll finish by showing you how you can configure the app differently for production without making any changes to your image. First, I'll get my SQL Server database running in Docker so I can run the whole app in containers. You can run databases in containers and the workflow is exactly the same as the web application that you've already seen. This is my Docker file, which starts from Microsoft's SQL Server Express image. That's a free to use image, which is publicly available on Docker Hub and is maintained by Microsoft. I'm switching to PowerShell for running commands and here I'm setting up environment variables. The SQL Server image uses system environment variables to confirm that you accept the license agreement and then to set the administrator password. Docker works nicely with environment variables. I'm setting these default values in the image so they get surfaced in every container, but you can also override the values when you start one specific container. I'm using a volume to store data, which is how you keep the data persistent outside of the container lifecycle. I won't cover that in detail here, but at the end of the video, I'll give you a link to a SQL Server lab, which walks you through volumes in more detail. Now I create a working directory for the database setup scripts and copy them in from the local machine. Here are the scripts. There's a SQL script, which creates the database and deploys the schema. As well as the tables and the keys, the SQL script also inserts reference data values, which get shown in the dropdowns on the website. The PowerShell script runs when the container starts. It checks to see if there are any existing database files, which there will be if this container is replacing a previous version of the database. If the data files are there, it attaches them, and if not, it runs the SQL script to deploy a new schema. Have a look at the lab to see how this is done, but basically it lets you run disposable database containers in development, or persistent database containers in test using the same Docker image. I package the database using Docker image build, giving it the name MTA dev sign up DB version one, and Docker will execute all the instructions in the Docker file. The output is a Docker image, which I can share in the same way by pushing it to the registry. So my database development workflow is the same as my app development and the artifacts are the same too. The Docker file is the input and the Docker image is the output. That makes for a much simpler tool chain across complex projects. Now I can start the database with Docker container run, but the database isn't going to run on its own. It needs to connect with the app container. So I'm going to switch back to my app Docker file and show you how the configuration works. I've made a couple of changes to my application Docker file. In the builder stage, I'm not using my original PowerShell build script anymore. Instead, I'm doing those build steps explicitly with Docker. I copy the NuGet package config file first 
and run new get restore. Then I copy in the rest of the code and run MS build. That's a much more efficient way of doing it. Docker builds images in layers with one layer for each Docker file instruction. It stores those image layers in a local cache and if it can reuse an existing layer, then it will. That means if I'm working on the code, but I haven't changed the NuGet references, then the restore stage gets loaded from the cache because the input hasn't changed. Making good use of the cache saves a lot of time in the build. That's also why the final copy command is at the end of the Docker file, so the preceding layers come from the cache if I'm only changing code. Those changes make the build more efficient, but I've made a couple of other changes to make the Docker image more flexible. The first is about configuration, where I'm capturing the path to a configuration file as an environment variable. In the web config file for my app, I'm loading the database connection strings and the log for net sections from separate files. This is standard .NET configuration functionality, and I have config files in the project with default settings for running in dev. The log for net config is set to write at info level to a file appender in the web application's app data directory. The connection string config has one of those awful connection strings from .NET 3.5. Buried in here is the server name for the database, which is signupdb. Docker has service resolution for containers built in, so I can run my database container and call it signupdb, and the web application container will find it by name. So my app is packaged with default configuration files, and my Docker file is set up so that I can override those defaults. The entry point to the image is a PowerShell script, which is what Docker will run when it starts a container. That script checks to see if a config file path is specified in the environment variable. If it is, then it deletes the default config file. This is just for one container, it won't affect the image. And then it creates a symbolic link from the real config file path to the one the application expects. The other change is to get the log entries out of the log file and into Docker. The startup script ends by starting IIS and making a local request to the web app. This happens inside the container and the first call generates the log file. Then the get content command it runs with the tail and wait parameters, which is basically an endless loop, which reads new log entries from the text file and writes them out to the console so Docker can read them. These are great patterns. They mean I can use Docker features like config objects, secrets, and logging to manage my application, but I'm not taking a hard dependency on Docker. The application uses the standard .NET configuration system. There's no Docker client library, which means that I can only run in a container. I can get all the advantages of running in a modern platform without being locked in to that platform. Now I can run my app. I need to start a database container and a web container, and that's captured in this Docker Compose file. Docker Compose is a really simple way to describe multi-container applications. I have my database container here, which will be available to other containers with the name signupdb, which is the default server name in my database connection string. The web app uses my v2 image, and it also publishes port 80 so Docker sends traffic into the container. I've said that the web app depends on the database, so Docker makes sure they start in the correct order, and I'm plugging both containers into the same Docker network. Docker creates virtual networks, so you can isolate traffic between containers, and I'm using the default NAT network, which Docker for Windows installs. I can run the whole application with one command now, docker compose up, dash D to put the containers into attach mode. Docker runs the database container first and then the application container. This deployment works with the default configuration in the Docker images. So when I browse to localhost, I see the web app and these dropdown values are coming from the database container. I can verify that by looking at the logs for the web container. Because I'm tailing that log file in the startup command, my log for net entries are being relayed out to Docker. And I can see log entries saying that the reference data has been read from the database and cached. That's super simple, 
And the great thing is that these are public images that I've pushed to Docker Hub. So if you want to run this application, all you need is Docker installed and this compose file. Docker will pull the images and run the containers and the app will work in exactly the same way wherever you run it. Okay, I covered a lot in that demo, but remember the source code is all on GitHub so you can work with this yourself. This is the repo to clone and you can check out the part two branch to use the exact code for this video. First, I showed you the Docker file for SQL Server, which packages a database schema into a Docker image, so you can run a database container with a known version of the schema and reference data. You don't need SQL Server installed, and the database container starts in seconds. If you want to have a closer look at database containers, this is the SQL Server lab to check out. Then I walked through some changes to the application Docker file. I structured the Docker file so the most changeable parts are at the end of each stage. That means the parts that don't change so often get loaded from the image layer cache, so building, pushing and pulling your images is much faster. I also changed how the application starts to integrate my existing app with Docker's approach to logging and configuration. I've got the option to load my database configuration into Docker so it gets surfaced as an XML config file in the container. And I'm reading my application log file to the console so the logs get stored by Docker. All that's without changing my application code. So my app runs flexibly in Docker from development to production, but it doesn't only run in Docker. To finish this video, I'll show you what that flexibility means for my production deployment. This is my production cluster with multiple Linux and Windows servers all running Docker and managed with Universal Control Plane, which is the Docker Enterprise Edition UI. I've created a service for version 2 of my app and in the configuration I've set a path for the database configuration file environment variable. This path gets populated by Docker from a secret which contains my actual connection string. The secret is stored in the cluster. It's encrypted and even administrators can't see the contents. The plain text only gets surfaced inside a container. When I created the secret, I used a connection string which points to a managed SQL database running in the cloud. My production environment is on Azure and so my application is using SQL Azure for storage. My container running in Docker can access the remote SQL server and when I browse the load balancer, I see my web application. It's the same application because it's exactly the same Docker image that I ran in development. I'm connecting to a production SQL database rather than a local SQL Server container, but that's all done through configuration. And back in UCP, I can look at the containers running my application service and then look at the container logs in the UI. So I've integrated my app with Docker and I can use all the great features of the platform and I still haven't changed any code. That's the end of part two. I've shown you how to package SQL Server databases to running containers, how to optimize your Docker files, and how to integrate your app configuration and logging with Docker. I'm still using an ASP.NET 3.5 app, and I'm deliberately keeping my changes minimal. So far, I haven't touched the source code, but now I have an app I can run in a modern container platform. For apps which aren't being actively developed, you could end here. But for apps which are still being worked on, this is a great starting point for modernizing the application architecture. I'll start that in part three, showing you how to break up a monolithic app into containers and how you can use Docker and Docker Compose to power your CI CD pipeline. That's coming in part three of modernizing .NET apps for developers. If you want to get started modernizing your own apps with Docker, head to the Play With Docker training site which is an online environment with Docker configured that has lots of great tutorials. And if you want us at Docker to help you modernize your application suite, head to docker.com MTA to learn how we partner Docker architects with infrastructure providers like Microsoft and consultancies like Accenture to bring your apps into the modern world.